it's a few minutes before six o'clock in the evening. There's the most beautiful moon up in the sky. It's quite luminescent. And the blackbird singing. The blackbird is always the last bird of the day to cast his song. He sings to mark out his territory. And there's the western sky. Still quite light. A little bit windy. Just something lovely to share with you. The end of the day. So, we shall go in. I've moved my egg chair over from the tunnel to here. I've been clearing up and moving things around a little bit. It's this big, come on, Jack, Jack. It's this big organisational drive for spring, you know. It's about getting everything together and ensuring that everything is ready. Got this beautiful gift yesterday: tulips and hyacinths, and they smell divine. So, I've been out in the tunnel, I've been working out there, I've been working on um, sorting things out uh, in the tunnel and then putting up Kutch grass. Now Kutch grass, it's spelt C-O-U-C-H and that's the grass that grows seemingly for miles. <laughs> It grows off in one shoot and it just keeps going. So, that's what I've been doing today. Just pulling lots and lots of that and winding it up into balls, like balls of yarn. And then putting them in the tunnel to dry out. And in a couple of weeks, I'll burn that in my little garden burner. You know, the little rusty bin outside, the little one that looks orange because it's covered with rust. Now there is a fire in here. I did actually light the stove before I went out. So I thought when I come back in I might be quite cold. But actually it's not cold outside at all. It's quite warm. So I've been very mindful today of lots and lots of things. As I work, my mind is quite free. I think this is one of the benefits of doing physical work. Your mind isn't tied to it. Your mind is allowed to be quite free because your body movements become quite rhythmic and, and um, you, you don't even have to think about what it is you're doing. You know, you just get on with it. So, and I've been up around the stone circle and I stayed for a short while in the stone circle just meditating, thinking. I just stood there looking around. I was listening to the birds. I was seeking a little bit of inspiration. Sometimes when I stand still, I just want the waves of consciousness, whatever is out there in the consciousness, to wash over me. And within that meditative state, I can gain all kinds of knowledge and sometimes messages, but they're not messages like we regard them. They're just sort of stream of consciousness thoughts that just literally 
sort of wash through my head. And for those of you who have tried meditation, I suppose that is partly what it is. We don't spend enough time being still. I think this is part of the 21st century illness of humankind. That we don't spend enough time just being still. Still and silent and thoughtless. That we don't think of anything, we just let we let consciousness wash through our heads, through our minds, through our beings. It's very scorned. That that approach to life is very scorned. And um, many of you will remember back to your early school days when if as a child, you were caught up in that global consciousness, in that universal consciousness, and, and, and you wanted simply just to listen and be very still, you'd be accused of daydreaming. And I remember in my day, you'd be punished for that. But you know, in these days of sounds. There are sounds everywhere. Invasive sounds. Not the sounds of wind or chimes or birds or insects or breathing. But those invasive sounds, those harsh, almost monosyllabic sounds, they're there in the background and for many people who live in built up areas and in cities and uh, large towns or near airports or motorways, those signs are incredibly invasive. And today I was looking, well earlier this morning I was looking at um, a little bit of writing by various people and it was about the importance of walking and going out into nature and walking and one of the quotes I posted on Facebook was and I'm just paraphrasing it now so if you need a solution to problems just walk just walk Don't think of anything. Just walk and be like be like a sponge, be absorbent. Absorb the energy and the consciousness. Just absorb it. And keep walking. You know it's a, it's a little bit like that advice advice that wise women give. You know, if you have troubles, sleep on it. Don't do anything. Don't say anything. Sleep on it. Well, you see, that's about having time and taking time. And not forcing yourself and refusing to be forced into giving an answer. We've become we've become a humanity of quick fire answerers. We we feel compelled to answer people very quickly. That that power of the pregnant pause, I think it was Harold Pinter. The, the playwright who was renowned for inserting that pregnant pause 
into his dramas, into his plays. And the pregnant pause is very powerful because it signifies a moment of absorption and reflection and ultimately power. And I think that we need to reclaim our power. We need to reassert our power. We need to become powerful in using the pregnant pause. In that not giving a quick fire answer is powerful, not weak. And Certainly in, in all the years that we've had Hollywood, by virtue of the fact that films are on a time limit, the script is always very, well not always, but usually very quick fire. There's very little room for the pregnant pause. And in fact, I've noticed over the years that films, movies that have won Oscars or awards have had exactly that, that little pregnant pause inserted hither and thither in them. Because that gives time for the audience to engage and to think and to imagine and to be co-creators of what they're seeing on the screen. something I'm going to practice more. I'm going to practice not giving quick fire answers. And I'm going to meditate on that and I'm going to reassure myself that it matters not that it be seen as a sign of weakness or stupidity, that one takes time to think before one responds. Before I go, before we say good evening to each other, <laughs> Jack, stop. <laughs> stop wagging your tail, it's making a noise. <laughs> Jack's a bit of a comedian, as I'm sure you've noticed. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's ordered books recently. And uh, also that I collected the second big print run of A Cottage in Three Acres. So I collected that from Carrick yesterday, from the printers in Carrick. And whilst I was in there, we had another little talk about the book that I so, so want to see published very soon. I, I'm, I'm not holding my breath for it being published this side of... <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps it's best I say nothing. Okay. Perhaps it's best that I allow the energies that are here at Beltana just to do their work. 
just to do their work. So I have the new, the newly printed Cottage and Three Acres. And if you'd like to order that, there's links underneath. And there's links underneath to um, Twitter as well, my Twitter account, where I post a few photographs every day. There's also links underneath here to the Facebook page, Beltona Cottage Goddess Gardens, where you can leave comments. Um, I know some of you aren't on Facebook, um, but look, I'm doing my best to ensure that the lines of communication are kept open. Um, so at the moment, in a way, it's really only Facebook that I have to uh, make small responses to. So, oh, dropped my glasses. So this is Saturday evening now. Tomorrow's Sunday. Um. I didn't get down to Art Carn today, but I think I'll take a little dander down there tomorrow because I've got uh, another ten trees to buy. And there's just something so energising out there about spring. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Makes me feel very warm inside. This life coming up. Beautiful. So, <laughs> so I'm posting the next batch of books, uh, the next batch of envelopes on Monday. So I've got um, books to post to South Africa and Australia, and. Um, England and America and Ireland. A few go into Ireland. So thank you to everybody who supports Belton Cottage. Yes, Jack, we're quite happy, aren't we? We're quite happy to have a little income. It's taken a long time. But we finally have a little income. So, have a lovely Saturday evening. Those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Southern Hemisphere, I think it's, have a lovely Sunday morning. And blessings to you all. <laughs>